Well, welcome back everyone. I hope you had a good spring break. We're gonna see how this goes. Uh, you'll have to bear with me as I try to learn the technology at the same time I am implementing the technology. So we're on a, a tight budget and I'm going to try to jump right in. So where are we? Well, let's take a snapshot. So we just got done covering 2.4, right? We just got done uh, covering the chain rule. And now we're going to take our knowledge that we have of chain rule and move into the area of what we call implicit differentiation. I want to make sure you understand what I mean by implicit differentiation. So take, for example, let's just do a very simple equation. Y is equal to 2x versus, let's say, x squared plus y squared is equal to one. Now, the first equation is explicitly defined for y. In other words, the, the game would be if you give me an x, I can then give you a y. Uh, now, uh, compare that to the second equation. We would say that the second equation is implicitly defined, right? Um, in other words, even if you gave me an x, I would still have to solve for y. So if you can isolate a variable, right? In other words, if you can get y by itself, then you have an explicit equation. Now, the type of equations or types of equations that we're going to study this, uh, uh, this section are going to be... Uh, the second type, the ones where we don't have an explicitly defined equation. And we still want to be able to take derivatives, and we still want to be able to do all of the, um, all of the, the previous skills that we learned, but now we want to be able to take the derivative as it sits. So bear with me. Let me get some space here, and we'll go ahead and get started. So let's start. I, I, I think the best way to approach this is um, to, to, to let, me, let, me, let me punt on telling you the, the why behind what I'm going to do right now. In other words, I'm going to jump right in, show you the how. It's going to look a little bit gimmicky, and then we'll take a second, and then I'll come back to what is really happening here. Ready? So I'm going to do implicit differentiation right now without telling you why we're, this works. So let's start. Let's say the equation we'll use again, y is equal to 2x. Now, if you want to take the derivative, we would take the derivative of y with respect to x, which is just simply 2. Okay, well, that's old hat. We knew that. All right, well, what about if you had, uh, let's say, the equation y cubed is equal to 2x. All right. Now, again, no justification for what's happening right now. You'll have to wait. So again, how do you implicitly uh, take a derivative of the following equation? Well, the derivative of y cubed is, well, 3y squared. But since we took the derivative of a y variable with respect to an x variable, we're going to have to have a dy dx attached, right? So as of right now, I've only taken the derivative of the left side of the equation. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, that we know. Where did that dy dx come from? Hold on, just wait. Now, let's go to the right side of the equation. Well, the derivative of 2x is simply 2. Taking the, I don't need a dy dx attached because I took a derivative of x with respect to x. All right, let's just do a couple more like this. I'm going to make up something. Let's say you had x plus 3y is equal to 2. And we would like to take a derivative. Well, let's start. Start with the left side. The derivative of x, well, that's just 1. The derivative of y is just 
3, but as you recall, since we took a derivative of a y variable with respect to an x variable, you do need a dy dx attached. Now, let's go to the right side of the equation. The derivative of a constant, as always, is just 0. All right. What is going on? This is starting to look gimmicky. I'm telling you, you are actually doing derivatives right now. You're doing implicit differentiation. You just don't quite know why this works or maybe even what it is that you're doing right now. Well, no worries. Let's do one more and then we'll address the why question. So let's assume that we have x. We'll make it tougher. x, y squared is equal to x plus 1. And we want to take a derivative. Okay, we're going to start with the right side of the equation this time. Um, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Okay, now look, I don't know what you've been doing over your spring break. You may have been killing brain cells uh, down in, I don't know, Miami, Panama City, Daytona Beach, wherever, Do you remember, it, the, the derivative of x is 1 simply because the power rule states that if you take the derivative of x to the n, then it's equal to what? It's equal to nx to the n minus 1. So now, in the case of just x, the n would be equal to 1. So that applying the our rule for uh, the power rule, we would have 1 times n to the power of 1 minus 1, or in other words, n to the power of 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. We have learned why that is the case in previous classes. Now back to where we were in this problem over here. So... We just got done taking the derivative of x with respect to x, and we got 1. Now, the derivative of 1, which is a constant, look at that, I, my arrow is not working there. Let me try to, there we go, now that's beautiful. The derivative of 1 with respect to, well, the derivative of any constant, doesn't matter with respect to what variable, is 0, okay? So the right-hand side of this equation is just 1. Now, the left-hand side is, well, let's take a look at that, right? Let's reach into our tool bag. Um, in this case, you have a product of two variables, right? This is an, an x variable and a y variable. And so what you should be thinking now is, well, hold on for a second. That... When we take the derivative of a product of two functions, that requires a product rule, right? So we have a rule for that. Now, I'm going to, uh, well, let's see here. I, th I think I'm going to go to the next page, give myself a little bit of space. Let's see here. Uh, that may or may not work. Let's find out. <laughs> Maybe not. So how about I just erase? Uh, by the way, if you... Were, had any expectation that these videos would be, I don't know, edited, that they would be short, concise, to the point, then you are laboring under a misapprehension because I'm going to do these videos the way I want to do these videos. So where was I? Well, we had x, y squared is equal to x plus 1. That was the original problem. We had already taken the derivative of uh, the right side of the equation. And now we're going to, uh, which we knew is just 1. So now we're going to take the derivative of the left side of the equation. Ready? Here we go. So I want to take the derivative of x, y squared. Right? I'm taking the derivative of the left side of the equation. Ready? So... We've already established this is a product. We need a product rule. So we're going to identify f of x as x. We're going to identify g of x as y squared. And that means we need f prime and we need g prime. All right, well, let's do that. Well, 
we've already established the derivative of x with respect to x is what? Well, it's 1. Oh, what just happened here? Okay, is 1. The derivative of g, now hold on for a second, stay with me, put away your phone, come back to me. The derivative of g with respect to x, well, hold on for a second, y squared, so that would, hopefully, let's see if you're anticipating this. So that would be, the derivative of y squared is just simply 2y, but since we took a derivative of y with respect to an x, we want to have a dy dx attached. Okay, now, from here, our product rule looks something like this, f prime times g plus f times g prime. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is drag and drop, right? We are, we're, we have all the pieces. We just need to put them in the right places, and then uh, I'm not even going to worry about cleaning it up right now because I'm just practicing a, a new method, right? So g prime goes here. F goes here, G here, and F prime here. Ready? Let's do this. So I know anything multiplied by 1 is itself, but I'm still going to just write this out so you, you know where everything's coming from. So that's F prime times G plus f multiplied by g prime. Voila. Now, at this stage, I'm going to try this little drag and drop feature. Ready? Hold on. Hold on. See how this goes. Will it work? Will it work? Will it work? Will it work? Boom. Look at that. They told me I didn't understand technology, but I do. I'm getting it. Okay. So we are done. We have uh, – now, let me make sure you understand. We – our work is not completely done with it, with uh, the implicit differentiation process. Okay. There's a little bit more work to do here. But we have for too long uh, postponed this – what the heck are, is going on What right now? Why does this work? And so, oh, my apologies. You'll have to, well, actually, I don't have to worry about erasing the board too quickly now, do I? Because you can rewind and rewatch. All right. So let me try to show you what is really happening here, right? So this is, what is going on? So to do this, uh, let me go, let me take that, I don't know, we'll just take a, uh, a term like y cubed. And we want to take the derivative of y cubed. Okay, now look. We're going to take the derivative, and now what goes here? What I'm about to write next, what variable is in this denominator here under this derivative is extremely important. So we want to take the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. Okay, that means something different. All right, so I just keep that in mind. Now, really what's happening, really what's happening, the reason why, I'll go ahead and write the answer, and then we'll backtrack. The reason why the answer is 3y squared, and then we have to attach a dy dx is as follows. You are actually doing a chain rule when you take the derivative of this problem. Uh, so let's recall, right? It's been a little while. The chain rule looks something like this. F prime of u multiplied by u prime. Okay, this requires a chain rule to take this derivative in this way. Um, now, Let's go ahead and proceed with this chain rule. So we're, if you want to uh, remember that the first thing that you would do is you would have to figure out what you want to define as u, 
In this case, we're going to let u simply be y. All right? And then you know where we're going with this. You need f of u. Then you would need f prime of u. And then you would need u prime. So let's get all of this out of the way. So if you tell me that you have defined y to be u, then if I have y cubed, I can rewrite that as u to the power of 3. Now, the derivative of u to the power of 3 with respect to u, right, same variable, is simply 3u squared. Now, what is the derivative? Here it is. Ready? Have you, have, you, have you come back to me? Are you with me? Here it is. This is it. If you want to take the derivative of y with respect to x, what is it? What's the derivative of y with respect to x? dy dx. I mean, that's, that, that's trivial, right? y prime f prime, dy dx, it's, a, it's trivial. So, of course, the derivative of y with respect to x is simply dy dx. Now, all we need to do at this point is to take the information we have and plug them into this chain rule. Ready? Let's see if we can do that really quickly. No, 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 come over here. There we go. All right. So, uh, my apologies. Uh, my ADD is telling me that I cannot have this little blue circle here, so it has to go. Ready? Let's go. So, F prime of U. Well, that's this right here. So, we're plugging in here. U prime, that's this here. This goes here. Let me rewrite that, and hopefully you can anticipate what that last step that we have to do. So that would be 3u squared multiplied by dy dx. All right, what's that last step? Say it. I know no one's listening. I know it's just you looking at the, a screen probably have your headphones in, probably have three tabs open on Facebook, Twitter. You're not paying any attention. Maybe this is just white noise in the background. I don't know, but what is it? Say it. What's that last step? Say it. We got to plug back in for you. So if you, let, if you decided that Y is defined as you, then we need to get back in terms of Y. So this ends up being what? Well, this ends up being 3 plugging y back in there for u, y squared times dy dx, which is exactly what we said it was, okay? So what have I answered for you right now? I've, I've shown you a gimmicky process of how to do implicit differentiation. Then we came back and showed... Uh, a little bit more information about the why. Uh, you know, we, we unpacked what was really going on. Why do we have to attach a dy dx when we take the derivative of a y variable with respect to an x variable? Well, it's simply because you're using the chain rule. All right, now, what I want to do from here is, uh, I, I this is, like I was just saying a second ago, this is uh, actually a four-step process. So, I, I'm probably going to cut this video because I want to make sure that it, the recording is coming out okay, the volume is okay. Then when I come back, we're going to jump right into the handout, um, and then we will, uh, we will continue. All right? Bye.